morning, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode. We are in Koh Panyan, which is a very beautiful island just near Koh Samui. It's a very beautiful location. We are anchored with two other sea winds, believe it or not. Uh, a 1600 and a 1260. I don't know what the chances of that are, but I think they're pretty slim. There's no other boats anchored in this bay apart from the three of us. And we had quite the hassle trying to get anchored. We had no less than seven attempts to anchor in this bay. So that really had us kind of doubting our abilities. <laughs> Not the best start, but we made it. We finally got the anchor set and uh, we're very glad we did because this is a very, very beautiful little bay. It's quintessentially Thai, I think. It's very laid back kind of vibe here. And uh, I think that it's right up our street and I have a funny feeling we'll be staying for a while. I'm Teresa, this is Nick, and this is Ruby Rose 2, our floating home. Join us as we settle into life on board our brand new catamaran, documenting our adventures and never shying away from the reality of boat life. Subscribe to our channel and leave a comment because we'd love to hear from you and a big thanks to our community of patrons. So today we are going to go ashore in a little while and hire a bike and we're gonna explore some of this beautiful island by bike. Oh, you got a little. Oh, no. Are you just gonna go for a little burn and just have a well, little. We're going for a burn. That's what I'm saying. Yes, we're, going we're gonna go for a little burn. I love for you so much I can find my way. Oh my god. So we're here in the village, and I'm not actually sure what this beach is called. I'll put it on the screen down below. Just a little street with shops and restaurants and bars and massage parlors, of course little mini markets, shops, laundry, and first stop is a smoothie. What would you like? Uh, one pineapple mango banana. One banana and coconut, please. Mm. Oh, it's So we came back to the dinghy which was half afloat so obviously the tides come in while we've been gone and because it's on quite a steep decline the water has come over the stern and we've got some water in the back of the dinghy and yeah it's a bit of a pickle because we can't bring it further up the beach because it's just too heavy we can't anchor it because nick doesn't trust the dinghy anchor it was like literally just a dinghy anchor that he found in Bataya. Ideally, we'd have to do what the longboats do, actually, and have uh, a kedge anchor and a, an anchor, two anchors, one going in each, each direction. But um, we can't find a second anchor, so it's all a bit of a pickle. Uh, episode of boat jobs in exotic location. Uh, one of the winter winches is loose. There's a. I'll show you. Oh, so this is our. Oh, sorry. Oh, sakes. Sorry. <laughs> this is our Harkin two-speed winch. Mm -hmm. There's too much movement in there. I don't like movement in a winch like that. Yeah, there's a lot of movement. Is that so, the only winch that has movement like that? Yeah, the rest are fine. Yeah. So there's obviously something loose in there. So I need to pull this all apart and have a little look. I need to read the manual. It's a very, very warm day today. I've got my trusty Bunnings hat on. Probably look ridiculous, but whew, it's very hot. this in place yeah so I'm not sure these need to be torqued but they're all loose so look see how much loose how yeah. loose that is yeah. Hell. yeah that's terrible they're basically not tightened at all yeah it looks like they just forgot to tighten them should look how much give is in this yeah that's pretty bad it's okay now I need to see if there's any rating for these to be taught so I'm just gonna hand tighten them Right. 
we're just checking the way this runs. So see how this works, like this. So currently this is feeding this into the cockpit, yeah? Yeah. Which is the way I like it. You happy with that? It was feeding back and I think it needs to feed into the cockpit. Again, I don't have torque ratings for these. Nor any way of talking them, actually. So it's going to have to be a hand tightened. There you go. Well done. There's a wobble in that. No, it's a it's wobble, wobble in. inside. Let's get... This one doesn't wobble. I mean, it's only the plastic top that's wobbling. Everything else is secure. Yeah. So, my old winch wobbled, by the way, so I, it never caused a problem. Yeah, that would have eventually just come off. Or we'd have bent the screws. And that would have been A successful job on Ruby Rose 2. Yay! And it didn't even take that long. That's a minor error. Well, there you go. Two things that never happened. <laughs> Swimming trunks. Where are we sitting? Where are we? Where, we can sit right here. I'm happy. I'm happy yeah. right there. Yeah. Copenhagen and our time here. It's been here for quite a few days, and it's been a funny old couple of days. Still a blur. Yeah. Still a bit of a blur. I'm clearly not in the swing of things. I still have one part of my mind in Saigon. I've got a very big part of my mind on all the little jobs I have to do to get this boat not right, but set up. And mm. I think that it's very, very important to differentiate between warranty and set up. Example. Um, you know, we're pretty, not remote, but we're remote for cruisers. There's not a lot of cruisers that come to yeah. these areas. And so we find ourselves in a position where we managed to procure a dinghy anchor. And I found one in Koh Samui and like, what did he do? I found a dinghy anchor and I found some galvanized chain. So that was all great. But then it transpired that a lot of these bays, you can't bring the dinghy up on the beach. The dinghy is too heavy. It's not a lightweight dinghy with the mm. bloody center console. And so the two of us to drag it up the beach, the wheels are useless, by the way, dinghy wheels are on sand. You might as well just like put some Rizzlers down there. So the best thing to do for us is to kedge off. So we had to find another dinghy anchor. And luckily there's a Seawind 1600 and uh, he happened to have four dinghy anchors on board or something. So yeah, he gave us a dinghy anchor. I did offer to pay for it. But yeah, so we now have a second kedge anchor for our dinghy. So we're slowly getting there. We're getting there and now we're getting a coconut smoothie. Okay. Okay, punk up. Oh, there you go. Thank you. Cheers. Amazing. So here's Cheers. to a, a day of not that many disasters, but a lot of tiredness. <laughs> so are you starting to feel like we're getting on top of things now? I think if we can get that screecher up, I'll feel happier. Okay, this morning we are going to attempt to put the screecher back up. Let's cross our fingers and hope this goes smoothly. For the last three or four nights, I've been worrying about the screecher, getting it back up. And the thing is, the last time we tried to get this back up, we had Nikki and Jason, which is four of us, and it was a shit show. A lot of you are gonna ask, well, why did you take it down? What happened? I'm the skipper, therefore it's my fault. But it was just a complete misunderstanding of how this sail furls. And when we had Mark on board, he did it, he, like obviously he runs Doyle, so he did it like, you know, he's super good at this sort of thing. What we did is we unfurled it, and then when we furled it, we did what Mark did, which was to put the furling line on the winch, 
but we just didn't have enough tension on the lazy sheet and what happened was as it kind of like went spinning around the the drum the lazy sheet got caught in the in the sail and it kind of like just turned itself into like it, it knotted itself up so it couldn't move either way so we just dropped the sail bagged it and once we bagged it we looked at the halyard and we're like the halyard is just tied up in knots it's literally it just turned itself and then we spent a long time getting that done because the whole point is it's a two to one halyard and the closer it gets to the masthead the more the twists getting it and the more resistance you get so if you've got more than two or three turns you can't raise the halyard or the sail through the halyard so yeah that was kind of some problem we had to undo completely user error nothing to do with the boat nothing to do with anything apart from us or me so Teresa and i have been trying to work out how to get it back up and it became apparent that the two to one halyard was really badly twisted at six or seven turns in it and we just couldn't get the turns out so the more we, we tried to raise the halyard with just a line on it and the closer it got to the masthead the more it would twist and turn so we've spent i don't know four or five days just getting the twists out of it it's, it's actually a really complicated thing because you're never quite sure what to do and it's all about tensions and how the blocks turn and then we had a lot of things this morning that we we're trying to make sure that if it went wrong we had a a way out we had the engines running we had everything kind of lied at, laid out we had sail ties thankfully it actually went up pretty straightforwardly didn't it Trace? Yeah. yeah it went in yeah. and so we got it up it was really very very baggy it's got quite a few twists uh, oh, it's Good. and then we just unfurled it a little bit and then refurled it and yeah we're pretty pleased like that's been worrying me for a while because we have to sail back to Pattaya which is a couple of hundred miles and realistically we need this sail so that now that that's up I feel a lot better and Therese and I have made the executive decision that we're actually going to take the day off I think there's some minor chores around the boat I need to do I want to do some random stuff like get the dinghy a dango clean it's got like half of the Sahara desert in it um, we're gonna get the day bed out and just chill today. But yeah, she's beautiful. She's up I know she's not as furled and beautiful as she will be getting it back up is now means we've got probably one of our most important sails ready to sail again Copanyan is uh, Just one of the most chilled peaceful places and it is like the perfect place for us just to I don't know just just slowly Get used to the boat. We've made some friends, which is lovely. Not something I was expecting. I didn't expect to make any cruising friends here, but we've met another two sea wind owners who are both really, really lovely people. And we've had a couple of days of just getting the boat straight and relaxing and having time massages and coming swimming. And it's just been a really, really lovely few days. So I hope you enjoy this episode. Please subscribe, leave us a comment, of course, and give us a thumbs up. We'll see you next week with a brand new episode. Bye, everyone. Bye everybody. <laughs>We are on the Balance 442. This boat is insane. We are looking at the Vision 444. Well, it looks like a heat shrunk version of our boat. This galley, it is huge. So let's talk about ventilation. You know that that's what I love to talk about. The build quality here is evident. She is absolutely immaculate. Good visibility to your sails as well. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, again, I don't have much to say. <laughs>